So uh, this is going to be the first in a sequence of videos about logic. Um, we're going to, in this video, this will be sort of the driest bit because you're not really going to be learning logic yet. Instead, you're going to be learning sort of a way of talking that allows you to then learn logic. So here's some basics of how arguments work, the elements of the arguments and uh, words to describe arguments. So first up is the word propositions. So what are propositions? Well, a proposition is what's expressed by a declarative sentence. Um, if you want to think of it as a declarative sentence, that's perfectly fine. So what's a declarative sentence? It's just a sentence that says something about the world, something that can be true or false. So if I say there's a pink uh, dog on my window well, um, that can be true or that can be false. But if I say, is there a pink dog on my window well? That's a question. It's not a declarative sentence. It's an interrogative sentence. It's asking a question. And questions can't be true or false. If I say, you are doing well today, that can be true or it can be false. But if I say, how are you doing? That can't be true or false. If I say to you how, are you, how are you doing, and you say false, you're making a mistake. If I say, how are you doing, and you say true, you're making a mistake. So not every sentence is a declarative sentence. Some sentences ask questions. Some sentences just give commands. They say, like, shut the door. Well, shut the door can't be true or false, whereas the door is shut can be true or false. So a proposition is just what's expressed by a declarative sentence. So something like, the door is shut, uh, the dog is home, uh, the box is orange. These things all express propositions. Uh, sometimes propositions are thought of as the bearers of truth and falsity. That is, they're the things that are true or false. So the sentence, uh, the, the duck went to the store and bought some bread is false. Um, why? Because the proposition it expresses is false. Propositions come in a few different kinds. Uh, there are atomic propositions. These are propositions that don't have any other propositions as parts of them. So if I say, uh, the duck went to the store, no part of that sentence is itself a proposition. Uh, by contrast, there are molecular propositions. So if I say, the duck went to the store and uh, dogs have fur, that's a molecular proposition because it includes two propositions in that one uh, proposition. That is, it includes two things, each of which can be a proposition on its own. Conditional statements include our molecular propositions. If I say, if the duck went to the store, then uh, the dog has fur, then there's two propositions in there. That is, there's two things that can be molecular propositions. Okay, um, now I mentioned truth and falsity in specifying what a proposition is. Uh, it's controversial, of course, what truth and falsity are. For our purposes, I'm going to adopt a very simple-minded view both because it's the simplest view and because I think it's the correct view. Uh, but it doesn't really matter what view of truth or falsity you adopt, no matter what view of truth or falsity you adopt, so long as you have one value that is true, that is one, one way a sentence can be or a proposition can be as true and another way it can be as false, you can do logic. But just so you have a sense of what I have in mind when I say truth and falsity, it's this. Uh, true propositions correspond to the way the world is and false propositions don't correspond to the way the world is. So why is it true that dogs have, you know, most dogs have fur? It's true because most dogs have fur. Why is it false that most dogs are hairless? It's false because it's not true that most dogs are hairless. So the world determines the truth value of those kind of propositions. Uh, again, if you want a different view of what a proposition is, that's perfectly fine with me. Or sorry, a different view of what truth and falsity are, that's perfectly fine with me. You might think instead of uh, true meaning True, instead of a proposition being true because it corresponds to the world, you might think it's true because we have, uh, it's, if we investigate the world as carefully as possible, that's what we'll confirm. Um, then it's the confirmation that's making truth rather than the world itself. Uh, this will all amount to the same thing for the purposes of doing logic. Belief, well, uh, as I mentioned in class on the first day, belief is sometimes used as a term of denigration. Um, so you say, well, that's a belief, not a fact. It's also sometimes used as a hedge. So someone will say, I believe there are jelly beans in the jar. And the adding of I believe is used to say, I'm not super confident, but I do think it's right. Um, we're not using believe in either of those ways, belief or believe. Instead, for us, a belief is just a mental attitude that affirms a proposition or disaffirms a proposition. So I can believe that it's raining outside. I can believe that it's not raining outside. I can, it's just 
something you think is true or something you think is false. That's a belief. Um, you can think of it like this. Whenever you utter a declarative sentence and you're speaking honestly, you've revealed one of your beliefs. So if I say, uh, it's raining outside, I've revealed that I believe it's raining outside, presuming that I'm not being dishonest. So adding I believe to a sentence from our point of view doesn't change anything about it. So if I say, it's raining outside, it means for our purposes the same thing as if I say, I believe it's raining outside. Either way, I'm committing to the belief that it's raining outside. Uh, when a belief affirms a true proposition, we can say that the belief is true. Just like when a declarative sentence expresses a true proposition, we can say the sentence is true. When a belief affirms a false proposition, we can say the belief is false. Just like when a declarative sentence expresses a false proposition, we can say the sentence is false. So it's fine to say beliefs are true, it's fine to say they're false. What it means to say a belief is true is just to say that the propositional content of the belief, the thing the belief is about, is true. Now comes the trickiest notion for our purposes, which is justification. Um, <clears throat> this is something like your reason to believe, your warrant, or your evidence. Uh, it's, import it's important to know that you can't rely exclusively on your senses when forming beliefs. Uh, people are sometimes tempted to think, well, I know how justification works. I know how having good reason for a belief about the world works. I have good reason for what I can see, hear, smell, and taste, but I otherwise don't have good reason. And I want you to see straight away, and if that were right, by the way, you wouldn't need logic because logic is a kind of reasoning. So you wouldn't even need reasoning if you could just rely on your senses. But you can't just rely on your senses. Here's a really simple example that emphasizes this. Uh, if you look at this object here, it will look to you like the area around the letter A up here is darker than the area around the letter B down here. Uh, this will look like maybe almost whitish gray. This will look like a deeper gray. In fact, the area around A is identical to the area around B. Um, it's only this middle area that's different. And uh, we'll talk later on in the semester about why this is, but I'll just show you right, right now. You can sort of block it. Use your hand to block out the middle, and you'll see that the grays are the same. Uh, I'll help you by sort of, uh, you, you know, sorry, you can just stick your finger there, close one eye maybe to help a little bit. And when you do that, you can see the grays go turn the same, and then when you move your finger, they go back to being different. You just have to make sure you block out this full area here. Well, the point is, in a case like this, you now have a decision to make. Are these grays the same, or are they different? When you look at them, when you can see this central area, they look different. When you look at them when you can't see the central area because you've blocked it out, then the grays look the same. Which is it? You have to use reason to decide. But more generally, this example, a very simple example, reveals that your senses can mislead you. Um, the famous case of the dress reveals the very same thing. So here you have the dress. Some of you will see it as blue and black. Others will see it as white and gold. Um, we'll talk about why this is later on, but basically different people's brains pick different hypotheses about the lighting conditions. Uh, so a blue and black dress seen under outdoor, sorry, a white and gold dress seen under outdoor light would uh, present just this way, and a blue and black dress seen under indoor light would present just this way. Your brain has to pick, is it indoor or outdoor light? Once it makes its decision, it determines which color experiences you have. The point here being just that uh, some people are getting it right, some people are getting it wrong. Your senses can mislead you. You need reason to decide who's getting it right and who's getting it wrong. Um, so back to uh, with this sort of aside out of the way, we can't rely just on our senses, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, let's look at relations among beliefs, truth, and justification. See how they all work together. So first lesson, beliefs can be justified or unjustified. That is, you can have a good reason for your belief, and you can fail to have a good reason for your belief. So uh, we can put it another way, i.e. just means that is, or like, you know, we're saying the same thing. Beliefs can be held for good reason or not held for good reason. Uh, beliefs can be true or they can be false. So they can affirm a true proposition or they can affirm a false proposition. So this is crucial to get. Just because you believe something doesn't make it, tr make it true. If I believe that it's viciously storming outside right now and it's not, then my belief is false. Of course, I would believe it's true, but that doesn't make me right. Beliefs can be justified, or sorry, justified beliefs can be true or false. The point here is you can hold a belief for good reason, and it can be true, of course, but it can be false even if it's held for good reason. So beliefs held for good reason can be true, that seems obvious, but they can also be false. So suppose that uh, 
you know, I'm pretty reliable. What I've told you so far in this class has been true, at least about things like the schedule. And I know that you're going to have a test, let's say, on a particular Monday, but I tell you you're not. Well, you'd have good reason to believe you're not going to have a test because I'm the instructor and I told you you're not going to have a test and I've been reliable so far, but you'd be wrong. There would be a test. So beliefs held for good reason can turn out to be false. There's all sorts of ways this can happen. A famous case is you look at a stopped clock. So you walk into a room, the clock has always been working in that room. You look at the clock, you know kind of approximately what time it is, but not the exact time. The clock says it's 6.10 p.m. You form the belief that it's 6.10 p.m. on that basis, but really it's 6.05. Why? Because the clock stopped. Well, it looks like you hold the belief that it's 6.10 for good reason, but you're wrong. You're unlucky. That can happen. Unjustified beliefs can also be true or false. Now, it's obvious that a belief held for bad reason can be false, but what I want you to see is that a belief held for bad reason can be true. The point is, you can get lucky. Just like you can be unlucky and have a justified belief turn out to be false, you can get lucky and have an unjustified belief turn out to be true. So, for example, uh, I might form the belief that it's going to rain tomorrow because I really want it to rain tomorrow. There needs, you know, I need there to be rain tomorrow. Well, my wanting it to rain tomorrow provides no reason at all to believe that it will, right? What I want doesn't determine the way the world is. Uh, and I can just have turned out to be right by chance. I just got lucky. I didn't have any good reason to believe it would rain. My only reason for believing was because I wanted it to be true, and it happened to be the case that it was raining, to, that it rains tomorrow. So I have an unjustified belief. I believe it for a bad reason, but it turns out to be true. Now, true beliefs can be justified or unjustified. Uh, this corresponds to things we've already looked at. The point here is beliefs that are true can be held for good reason, but they can also be held for bad reason. And similarly, false beliefs can be justified or unjustified. That is, beliefs that are false can be held for good reason or can be held for bad reason. And since these are just cases that we've already talked about in other ways, uh, I'll pass them by here. Okay, so why do we care about justification? Why do we care about having good reason if justified beliefs can turn out to be false and unjustified beliefs can be, turn out to be true? The reason is very simple. Beliefs that are justified are more likely to be true than beliefs that are unjustified. So having a justified belief raises the probability that it's true. And that's the best we can do. We can aim to raise the probability that our beliefs are true. Okay, we're going to stop the dry introductory unit on the basic background terms there. So hopefully you know what a proposition is, you know, have a sense of what we mean when we talk about belief, a sense of what we mean when we talk about truth and falsity, and how belief, propositions, and truth and falsity relate to one another. There's a little exercise that you'll do to indicate that you've learned uh, these relationships. You can go do that now. And next we'll next in the next video we'll talk about what arguments are.